Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. That's right, it's episode 100, which means it's time for a rebrand. We're looking silly, we're looking fun. That was a new theme song. We haven't fully decided wow. on something yet. <laughs> it sounded like you fucking stole, you stole off a nightclub album, which <laughs> I'm very into. It's not bad. <laughs> So I, I need great. to, I, I'm auto fading it now, but I need to actually go in and build it. So it, it fades properly so I can intro. Um, yeah. Uh, Man, I gotta tell you, as somebody that listened to only Neo eighties vaporwave genres for like two years straight, that brought back some good memories. So yeah, <laughs> let's just keep that. That's solid. I'm glad you liked it. Um, I did some workshopping with Kyle in the chat or in our Discord today, and he liked them. So I was like, okay, they're probably good. Um, folks, it's episode 100 of Local Chat. The gang is here. I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me is a man who enjoys wearing that shirt. God, look, this is like <laughs> the best them. $6. Best $6 I've ever spent on this beautiful Selena shirt. Yeah. It's great. Oh, that's Selena Gomez? <laughs> <laughs> I really can't. Honestly, you could Jesus tell me that is literally Christ. anyone. I believe it. It's Selena. Like the film? <laughs> the film Selena? Yeah, it's her. Yeah, but you know that's based on a true story, right? Like vaguely. She's not Do real. Do you think Selena... Is Selena Gomez is named after Selena, right? I don't think it's spelled the same way, so no. <laughs> no, I think yeah, it but is. I didn't want to give her too much credit. <laughs> uh, also joining us from the land of save data, Chris Elliot. Hello. Uh, we're de we definitely planned for me to be on the 100 episode after the first one, and it wasn't just a weird coincidence. Shut up. <laughs> uh, you'll notice there's little name placards that I did not fill out because I think they're too small. <laughs> I need to fix them. <laughs> Um, I was putting in the text in OBS and I was like, these are way too small because, yeah. because we should, we shouldn't try it and see how it looks out. No, they're too small. Yeah. Fuck them. No, no, we got no. too big an audience. We can't, oh, we can't do sorry. it live. We can't do it live. I tried it out pre-stream. I put like two boxes in and I was like, this looks like absolute dog shit. So I made, hey, um, object just call. a quick, quick interjection here. Selena Gomez is indeed named after Selena, oh, the Tejano God. singer. Okay. Thank you. I also, um, if anyone follows the 3000 Windows icon uh, Twitter, they like released like, or they like pointed to where they pulled the icons from. So I just shuffled those in the middle of the screen. Because, oh, like, in the top middle. Oh, that's yeah, right what that is. So okay. They'll that's change nice. eventually. They'll slowly change. I don't know if any of them are horrible or bad, so we'll find out. Um, do, we what about still, the, uh, <laughs> do we still ignore chat on the show? Because we have people saying hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, yes. The oh, there's all yes. these icons next to me, too, <laughs> that are from that. But there's also Roller Coaster Tycoon and Factorio and Lego Racers. And that ogre. And, uh, the, and, does oh, does the, the, the gift guy. change? Is that on a no, slideshow? No, that, that's the other thing I need to program in, uh, is that changing. But I wanted to make it so uh, the gifts are underneath that top frame, but above the background of it. So I need to actually go in and fix that. Um, mm, folks, I've been away for I two weeks. That, I've been uh, on for the those land. of you listening. We've got a brand new overlay. <laughs> Lots we've got of a brand new on. overlay. Go check yeah, it out. You can't, you can't see it on your podcast app. I've been away for two weeks. I'm back. I had a lovely time in the land of Israel. Uh, shalom, everybody. Uh, Hello. I am now circumcised. It really hurt. <laughs> Yo, um, I've been reading the Bible, and there was this section where they were like. You Pull town. You Pull have down. not been reading, yes, the, Bible. Yeah, I reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. What? Awful. I started Exodus today. Why? Because um, it's this, insane. <laughs> there's this part in Genesis where I'm trying to remember the specifics, but basically the early Hebrews roll up to a town and they're like, "Hey, uh, we'll help you guys, but whole town got to be circumcised." And they like come back two days later and they're like, "Everybody circumcised now. All the <laughs> boys, men, everybody." And it was just like, "Did they check?" Oh, God. I think they did. Oh, okay. Is that the hill of is that the hill of foreskins story? I, so the thing about no, the Bible that I'm starting to realize is that <laughs> for the amount of like like reuse and references and adaptations from the Bible, the actual source material is very thin and doesn't have a lot of details in it. Are you, I'm sorry. Are you, Ian? You're what? Thirty two. 
Yes, that's correct. You wow, at age, it. I know, I'm shocked. You at age 32 are just discovering the concept of how organized religion around the Bible works. No, but I just mean like, like for example, the whole story of of Isaac and Abraham, right? Like that's uh-huh. a classic, well known story. It's like seven verses long, and each verse is a sentence. Like it is yes. very short, but it's they've very had, short. There's not a lot of details, but they've just spun it out over the years and to have all these. They've details had and thousands meaning. of years with nothing to do but besides <laughs> like edify and make shit up off this. E and they have fuck yeah. all to do because religion's a scam. It's yes, true. yeah, I agree. But it was just surprising to me that I'm like. Wow, they really like spun a lot from from so little, and it's just. I, I was, you know, what? <clears throat> we're gonna do this now. I posed this question to Karen a while ago. I also want to say I just uh, live on air bought more uh, useless collectible <laughs> card game booster boxes from games I've never heard of. Uh, so uh, exciting! But no, <laughs> I posed this before. At what point do you think people making stories for the Bible or any religion? This like is the intro. Point, this is the intro to your hundred. Yeah. <laughs> at what point did the um, like, what percentage of those people were doing it maliciously? Like, knew they were making shit up to, uh, like, affect Zero. people, and what percent of people were just re- repeating what they had heard at the time, or like, in like two hundred years after? I guess, like at the, I don't know. I don't think how to phrase that. At the time, that. at the time, a very low number that gets a, a expeditiously higher every single like three years. <laughs> I, I don't until, I, honestly, until it reaches a critical mass called uh, Martin Luther nailing fucking theses <laughs> to his door. <laughs> but I think at least you know. Again, I'm very early in it, but a, none of it feels <laughs> necessarily <laughs> malicious so far. <laughs> It just feels like these are stories, like stories from the old world. And if you if you don't look at it as in this is the word of God, it's just like this is a collection of myths and stories oh, yeah. that have been semi codified. No, I don't blame. I don't have. I have none of my problems. With religion stem from the actual Bible. It stems from the thousands of years of genocide yeah. and atrocities oh, totally. committed on behalf of the Bible. I want to be the, clear though. The book didn't do anything wrong. It there just got translated the poorly. There are parts of the Bible that suck though. That are just like somebody, so. Anyways, somebody get the Bible an editor because so. Anyways, I was in Israel. Um, <laughs> where it all happened uh, I will say uh, there's not much I'm going to talk about because it was mostly just like a family trip and uh, it, it was fun to go there and like actually see the places I learned about growing up um, the one thing I really and I won't go too far into this I really liked about Israel which was super weird is all of the uh, thank you all of the um, cities are built on the tops of the hills yeah. And mountains where in America everything's in the valleys. So it's like really weird to look around and see cities up on hills. Like it yeah. was just like a weird thing. And and I understand why it's like <laughs> you want to be able to see around you and defend yourself. And then the other thing is um all the archaeological stuff, Jerusalem. Uh her Karen's grandfather is a former archaeologist. He un he like uncovered a giant Roman city. That's and like rat as rebuilt shit. amphitheaters and stuff. So we didn't go to the city he uncovered. We went to one he worked on later, uh, and it was it actually, up? it was the first. What'd you say? I said, did they cover it back up? Yeah, they covered that it is back retirement. up. They were done. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they actually had a, a the one of the earliest synagogues that had like actual um, mosaics in it. And the story they like uncovered is basically you're if anyone knows about Judaism, you're not supposed to like put stuff around synagogues. Like I just started reading. Not in not like Catholics do where (laughs) they like put illuminations up in windows and everything. You're not supposed to do that in synagogues. And so this one they think they did it on the floor because so many people were converting to Christianity because the churches were beautiful. They were like mad about that and wanted to make synagogues look beautiful. Yeah, that that tracks Um, for like the time. Yeah, because it was like it had this mosaic that was similar to one in Italy. It was like this whole thing. So uh, that was really neat. Uh, and then um, uh, for real, though, next time, take me with you. I, I, I do want to oh, do yeah. an Israel trip. How was uh, yeah, how it was, was cool? How was uh, how was Palestine? Oh, there I was in the West Bank for a bit. Um, OK, a, a Israeli controlled West Bank. Uh, and uh, when we went to exit there, Karen and I had bought some scarves off a guy, and they really didn't like that. Oh, yeah. no. 
Uh, they really didn't. Um, because so fuck them. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah. Uh, all that aside, uh, the one video game related thing was in one of the medieval museums. They were playing uh, Skyrim music. I was like, <laughs> is this? It was a Leonardo God. da Vinci exhibit. <laughs> they were playing Skyrim music, and I shazammed it. Oh to double God. check. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is Skyrim music. Um. So yeah. Uh. Anyways, that was my trip. I'm back. I was sick. I was sick before I left. I was got a sinus infection on the plane. My I thought my head was going to explode. Uh, it was a good time. I did play my Steam Deck, though. <gasps> so you did take it with you, because I remember you were debating. Yes, I wasn't going to, and then I did, and I'm glad I did, because I got a good amount of time in with the good old Dwarf Fortress. No, the new, the new yes, old Dwarf the Fortress. the new old Dwarf Fortress. Uh, it plays very well on the Steam Deck. All right, just real quick. One of the very few approved chat shout outs during local chat. Bye, Halucha. Thanks for stopping by. Bye, Halucha. Bye, Halucha. Thanks for stopping by. I hate, I hate that you guys sandbag chat. It like, drives me insane. <laughs> it's a podcast. I only sandbag chat if they're... <laughs> listen, if you're talking along, I will pull your points. But if you're just like saying stuff, like Todd Howard is smiling somewhere. He is. Um, in a synagogue. He is. He always is. He's whacking yeah, off. Yeah, no, no, no offense. It's just one of those things. I think I'm the one that drives it because I hate if I'm listening to a podcast and they start referencing the chat from their live broadcast. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. no, I'm not there. So only on only only in logo chat do we. Yeah, like, it's Ian, it's Ian ear time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, it's, it's like <laughs> Ian for your ears. <laughs> but, but Dwarf Fortress. Um, so I haven't played a ton on Steam Deck or of games on Steam Deck. But Dwarf Fortress isn't even on the list of, like, approved for Steam Deck, and it still just runs perfectly fine. Well, also, uh, like, what? It came out, like, what? Fucking eight days ago or some bullshit? Yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I've been loving Dwarf Fortress. I haven't gotten super far into it. I've, I did the tutorials, uh, the first tutorial on the on my first base, and then I flooded it because I wanted to. And then I started another one, and then I came home, and there's no cloud save, so I had to restart on my computer. Ooh, um, yeah. The tutorial, I am glad it's there, but it is also way too thin for that game. I really well, wish they'd put more into that. So the tutorial, I didn't realize there was the whole survive, the up other menu that had all the other tutorials in it. Yeah, like the other, the other like text stuff. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't realize they were there, and you can like play through those as well. Um, I just thought there was the one intro tutorial, so I was going through those as well. Uh, I did also play a little bit of Don't Starve. Uh, Wait, we're gonna we're gonna skip past Dwarf Fortress. We don't want to well, talk about Dwarf Fortress. Well, I figured I was. I figured you would talk about it. More Let's keep talking about it. Oh, we can I, keep talking I'm about. It. I'm really enjoying it because my my history of Dwarf Fortress was in 2012. Uh, one weekend, my parents were out of town, and I was a poor college graduate, and I said. Uh, let me just go buy some uh, 40s of Old English from the local liquor store and get drunk and learn to play Dwarf Fortress this weekend. And I had a lot of fun. I was, barely knew what I was doing. I think I had like a minor tile set, but it still looked like dog shit. And the thing I remember <laughs> the most the thing I remember the most is that like I killed off half my dwarfs early because I accidentally tunneled them into a section that sealed itself. And then they because of a cave in. And then they asphyxiated and it took me like 15 more hours of gameplay to get my fortress back into a good enough state to have one of my dwarfs mine a statue for the temple. And they and, and they built a statue and they placed the statue and I went and looked at the statue and it was a statue. Uh, it was a statue depicting one of the dwarfs asphyxiating that I had killed in <laughs> earlier in the run. Nice. And I just. I just paused the game and I just laid on the floor for like 10 minutes in a drunken <laughs> state, just being like, wow, wow. Uh, but yeah, Dwarf Fortress Steam is just, it's weird. It's like they added enough for you to get over most of those hurdles because it's got actual UI. It's got the mouse click. It's got, it's got, you know, menus that you can go through instead of having to like memorize all this key stuff. But the key stuff is still there. Like, like I, I, I don't think yeah. you played too much with the keyboard, Will, but... So you probably haven't hit this, but I've started to use the keyboard more. Like I'm like you here, I got to do this end. Like I'm using that instead of the menu more, which is crazy. 
Um, and there's still the insanity behind it. It just makes it a lot easier to like see the stories behind your dwarfs with the weird stuff that's going on. Um, so I am enjoying it. I need to play it more. Um, my fortress is actually going really well. I'm up to like 23 dwarfs and there's been wow. like zero fatalities, nothing going wrong. And I'm like, OK, so, yeah, it's it, it is it's the same old dwarf fortress. But what it's done is it's it's really smoothed out a lot of the rough parts that would push you away. Yeah. And now you it makes it so much easier for pretty much anybody to get in there and enjoy the insanity of that game. The, the only complaint I have, and I, I don't think this is a problem with the Steam version. I think this is a problem with Dwarf Fortress in general, is that I probably played that game for like five hours before I remembered, like, aren't there like details in here, or like stories? And it's not really until you like click into a dwarf and like see what they're thinking that you start to get into the craziness or like you go into like the background mode or you like examine objects like a yeah. statue or an engraving. So I think they honestly, I think they need to do a better job of surfacing some of that insanity because on the surface, it just seems like it's a cool like city sim, but you have a little bit of depth to like you have mechanical depth to it. But re where it really shines is like all the in like insane stories and names and events and like <coughs> characters with weird motivations that are happening in the background. And I think that's a little bit too hidden. I almost wish that was like in your face a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe I'm just off the cuff here. No, uh, it, I think they're working on that because like classic Dwarf Fortress, it's pretty much the same way. If like you miss something, you go to Legends mode to see what happened, like and go read yeah. about what happened. So. I, I do like that they surface it better. You can click on a dwarf and it's not one giant page of text about them. You, it's like separated out. <clears throat> also, they've changed stuff for the Steam release. Like uh, dwarves in the Steam release can do multiple jobs where in yeah, the original one, one they can't. Um, they're like stuck with what they know. Um, Are the, is, yeah. Is the, or, is the order system, is that new for the Steam no, version as well? That, that's, that was that's in the original. Right. Uh, that's the thing I'm finally like now I'm at the point where I'm building stuff and now it's like I always gave myself the excuse of waiting for the steam version to uh, learn like managing orders and like setting up a like proper like hunting and then uh, to the kitchen and then smelting and all that sort of stuff and now I'm like sitting there waiting having to do it and I'm like oh god now now's the time where I have to like set up like have, an you, economy. have you done it have you done it yet, though? No, no, no. I, I, I'm still too early like, on in my stuff. But the orders are so simple because the especially with the, with the UI that they have, you go in there and you're just like, hey, like one of the first ones I did was like make doors. And it's like, all right, how many doors do you want? And I'm like, make 10 doors. And by default, that just means they're going to make 10 doors and then they're going to stop. But then there's a button to put conditions on it and you click into that. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then at the, the bottom of it, it has default conditions like, hey, make 10 doors if my number of doors ever goes below 10. And then it's like, and if the number of material that I can make into a door is above 10. So it has all these conditions, but the defaults are so good that you can very quickly set up these conditions which is like if i run low on doors automatically start making doors and only if i have enough material to make proper doors and it's like you set up all these orders yeah. and, and your economy's just going it's yeah great. sorry I, I meant like like there's the stuff where like oh let me set up the elaborate traps where i'm like putting a drawbridge oh and yeah smoothing yeah. walls or like hey i want to divert this channel of water to power my magma thing and like all that yeah. sort of stuff yeah, that's it's like stuff point. I've yeah, never got. It's same with like the I know like B stuff is really complicated and all that. So it, it, it's nice to have like a base level of understanding now where the controls and the way to interact with the game is now easy. So you can then now learn the, the more complicated stuff. I love it. Which I'm excited for. Chris, have you played Dwarf Fortress at all? Well, I put it on my uh, games you've been playing list. <clears throat> but that was only to gaslight you two, and uh, I have not played it. <laughs> that was just a so, so chaos in the world. Um, now, but I did want to talk time. about it, and I, I had a, a couple things I wanted to ask about it. One, is it worth $30? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, the other thing was, I just wanted to mention, the only time I've seen Dwarf Fortress played other than the series in your channel, which I actually recommended to someone yesterday, um, but was when uh will and i had one of our many terrible jobs we had together um and uh we're sitting there and i was playing runescape and uh will was playing dwarf fortress and i looked over and i go what's going on and he goes 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just keep, just keep I clicking. Think, I think the best thing you can say about the Steam Edition is now you know. <laughs> Between the graphics and the UI, you can at least know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's so good. It's just fun. And it's like, it really is losing is fun because the only way to learn is just by playing and i'm like on my fourth fortress now where i'm like oh do i should i put the workspaces and the stockpiles next to each other or should i build out the rooms down here and like i'm trying to remember like i was setting up noble offices for the bookkeeper and offices for the the manager and everything it's just like i'm just accessing knowledge from watching hours of videos um yeah. i think i'm gonna check out some of those beginner streams and stuff like that but so far it's been it's been fun speaking of fun we are going to be starting our dwarf fortress single fortress let's play series on saturday uh probably i'm gonna say it probably 8 p.m eastern oh my uh God. it's called dwarf boys we will be in costume and there will be improv skits i'm and actually lots of quite excited i hadn't heard about this just now i'm quite excited I, you know, honestly, I haven't even said the best part, which is as we are playing, we're going to, the, the game. The game just constantly spits out lore, right? Like right. this is so and so and they're so and so and they look like this and they look like this and this happened. As we're playing, we're going to periodically pause the game and go to Dolly 2 or some other AI generator and start generating images and bringing them into the stream so that we have this is what that dwarf looks like based off that description. That's and cool. that's that's where the two dwarfs in the uh, the thumbnail for the series come from. When I typed in Will Crosby, a YouTuber in dwarf costume and Ian Gibson, a YouTuber, and those just popped out immediately. And it's uh, if you have disposable income, Mid Journey is exceptional. I very highly recommend it. What's the uh, what's the what's the cost on that? Ten bucks a month or if you want the pre like the so you get you get like 25 whatever the fuck for free just to, to try it out that's yeah. 10 bucks a month gets you like a hundred or like like hours and hours of generation it's it's that's how it measures it um and then uh, i think if you do 30 dollars a month it's basically infinite because you can like never use more than like 100 hours in a month unless you're a psychopath do i have to join via discord yeah it's yes. all through discord it's crazy it's it it's it'll seem weird until you use it for like an hour and you're like oh this is a brilliant system wait so you you generate through discord yeah and you can do it on a private server if you don't want people to see your shit but yeah uh you do it through a discord server and like it's it's a i it's a brilliant system i can't believe they figured out how to make it work so smoothly i'll take a look i'll take a look that's why if you look at our, our uh if you look at our D D show that's how i generate all the art is uh I watch your content just skim through it fuckhead <laughs> Actually, I'll send uh, you. I I, I actually, have it. I, I did watch a short clip. Y'all y'all got it going on because you're DM, right? Yeah, I have I have an Im I have an imager gallery. I'll just send you that. It's easier. Because the one thing I did like about Dolly, not to go on a tangent here, was I didn't realize you could generate the image and then it bookmarks that, and then you could pull it up and regenerate off that. So it made it easy for you to go back in your history and like iterate yes. off of it. You can do the same with I assume uh, all these programs, but Mid Journey as well. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I realized I needed to order something. <laughs> um, Is it more trading cards? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's wearables. Uh, <laughs> it's a costume folks. for the fucking stream. <laughs> oh, well, I realized I had asked Ian if I needed a costume, and he never got back to me. And then you just made me remember. But I like it's either I didn't get back to you or I deliberately didn't message you because I was pissed because we've talked about this idea in detail for months now. <laughs> no, we haven't. That's a, a, a confounded Anyways. lie. Uh, uh, let's uh, skip Don't Starve because fuck that game. Let's talk about Pentiment. Wow, you're rude. Uh, Pentiment, I played like another half an hour today. That's it. Are you uh, are you getting into it? Yeah, I, I am enjoying it. It's fun. Uh, I play the I I had to. I had to blacksmith some shoes today in the game, which was fun. Oh, I didn't do that. <clears throat> That's interesting. Yeah. I've been I've been wanting to play that with Vic because obviously Vic's like major is in that era of, of history. I don't know anything it's about fantastic. anything. Um, it's fantastic. But it it's just looks it just looks awesome. Yeah. It's very good. My biggest complaint with it is I think I'm 10 hours in. The game's too fucking long, man. It it has I don't want to call them false endings, but it has like these points where things happen and you go 
fuck, that was good. And you go to put the controller down and then it's like next act. And it's just like keeps going and you're just like, what the fuck? So the game is a bit too long for me. And honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to finish it, even though I think I only have a couple hours left. Mm. But other than that, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Um, and you want to talk about Dyson Sphere program? Yeah, I just want to say, folks, I finally did it. Um, I that, you build like spaceships and shit in that, right? Yeah, technically, yes. Look, it, but the better way to describe it is guess what game it is, but in 3D on multiple planets. Uh, you don't get to look it up. Factorio? I'm not. It, it is up. Factorio. Yeah. <laughs> It's Factorio in 3D on multiple planets, but um, the oh. crazy thing it does that I actually really, really love, and it's going to be hard for me to go back to Factorio oh, with this. Oh, yes, this one. It, there's multiple solar systems. So, like, like towards the end of the game when I had enough, like, tech and I could do this easily, I would be like, oh, I'm running out of raw iron. So I would just go to a different solar system, like, bring a whole bunch of stuff with me, like, set up miners, set up solar panels for power, put down a giant space station, and then and then be like, you, mine iron, turn it into ingot, and throw it into this tower, and then I would go back. And you could just set up all these other systems elsewhere that are just feeding stuff into your empire. And it's fantastic because of that. That. This um, one to me has like I thought it was a different game, but now I'm looking at it, like this has the one that makes me think it's like a, the perfect median between Factorio and Satisfactory. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, so I finally beat the game. There's kind of there's I don't I don't know if they're both win conditions, but in my head there was two win conditions. One was build the Dyson sphere. So like towards the end game, you start to manufacture Dyson sphere components, and you have to manufacture rockets for them to go on, and then you sh and then you shoot the rockets, and that builds the frame, and then you're building solar sails that get shot up and they get part of the frame. So I built an entire Dyson sphere around the sun, um, and that took me a while. It was like literally like <clears throat> five hundred thousand different pieces that I had to manufacture and stuff and shoot up there, and it was fantastic. But it was like because like the best part is that the game's beautiful because as you're stomping around on your little like the little prince planet and all of a sudden the sun rises and you look over and like around the sun is your like partially constructed dyson sphere and it just <laughs> looks gorgeous um so i completed that and then the other thing i did was there's science in the game like in factorio and one of the other win conditions is like get to the final science which is white science and like manufacture like ten thousand white science uh, of get, course it's get to the yeah. final science <laughs> it's me uh, it's the one of those, final science it's fucking ian's doomsday cult is the final science it's funny because now that you mention it it's 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 not unique to this game because Factorio and some other stuff do it, but it's literally one of those things where it's like, we can't really come up with a new master tech, but it needs to be difficult. So we're just going to call it science. And it's just something that's kind of useless, but it's <clears throat> difficult to manufacture. You know? Yeah. It's like when you're playing Civ and you're like, Asha, I need more science. And it's like, that's the, that's a science yeah. that makes no fucking sense, sir. It's just, yeah, it's just like a material. It's just like a useless, weird material that they've decided to like force you to work towards. Yeah. Um, but I got that. And, and at the end of it, it was an 80 hour save. And I got to be honest with you, it was incredible the entire way through. So if you if you like Factorio at all, you have to play Dyson Sphere program, because honestly, in my head and in my soul and in my heart, there is a there is a <laughs> war going on because I don't know which one is better now, because Dyson Ian, Sphere program makes some very good enhancements. <clears throat> Ian started with Pentiment's too long. I'm like 10 hours in and then said my Dyson Sphere save is 90 hours. It's great. You know what honestly would make Pentiment so much more easier is if it had there a was giant just, robot and spheres. If it, was, if it just had fast travel, man, oh. if it had fast travel and if it would tell you which areas had things that you have not done yet. Like mm, yes. uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of just running around being like, OK, is there anything here I can talk to? Is there anything here I can knew I can look at? And that's what's killing the game for me. Everything else is fantastic, but there's just too much feels like wasted running around. Anyways, that's my that's my time in games. Chris, what have you been playing? Oh, baby, you know I've been playing that <laughs> RuneScape. Uh, it's the perfect video game. I've talked about it uh, endlessly. Uh, I only I only bring it up now because I want I wanted to clue you two in on this because I feel like you'd enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> so, old school RuneScape, famously the reboot of RuneScape Three, a game that sucked ass and almost killed the entire company. Still around. You can still play it if you want to. Um, so in order to make sure they didn't fuck it up again, they implemented this system called the polling system. It's a very simple voting system. 
if something wants to be added into the game, the devs propose it. Everyone that plays the game, assuming you meet a, a small list of conditions, uh, you're allowed to vote. Uh, things have to pass the vote to be added to the game. Very simple. Um, this system sucks because uh, it ne- you formerly needed 75% yes to pass to get in. Um, which means that if you vote no, your vote is three times more valuable than a yes vote. Great system. They've lowered it to 70 now instead of 75. Slightly better, still bad. Um, but uh, currently there is a poll running. Should they add a new skill into old school RuneScape? <gasps> um, in case you're wondering, the average poll gets about 90,000 votes. That, that's like, you know, the, the hardcore player base mm-hmm. old school RuneScape. This one is currently nearing 250,000 votes. Wow, y'all so got riled up. Everybody, their grandmother and the six accounts they own, I voted all three of mine, assholes, um, are <laughs> voting in this thing. And the old Screwscape subreddit has devolved into what is ostensibly World War I propaganda memes about voting yes or voting no for the new skill. And it's great. Hell yeah. Dear God. Um, that's incredible. Did they the, say what the skill is? So, so, so here's the. So they've pulled new skills in the past. They've all failed by pretty small margins. So they they've been doing this recently, which is a very good system. Which is knowing that the people are too picky. So it's we're going to pull a yes or no. Should we do blank? And then we will pull options later. Whichever okay. option gets the highest percent is the one that we go through. So this gotcha. poll normally polls are like you know it's like five or six questions, a couple of things that we should add to the game. This is one. Should there be a new skill? Yes or no? Why would people vote no? Um, so a lot of people don't want new skills because they fear that A, uh, Jag- Jagex will do a bad job of adding them. A legitimate concern. Um, okay. B, there are people who are purists and think that you shouldn't add anything to the game because that is not old school. But that's also how video games die. Um, yes. is by lack of content, you stupid, dumb baby morons. And then there are an alarming number. It's around... 30,000 players who have maxed they have they have ev- they have every skill to 99 um mm-hmm. who don't want that because then they will lose their max status. Oh. Who are the whiniest babies of them all? Who are the people who are the people who are no- vote- voting no on like you know six accounts cuz they're perverts? Are you half okay. of a pervert then? No, I'm a hero. <laughs> I'm a I'm hero. Fi- I'm a I'm god. Fighting, I'm fighting for justice. I'm fighting for Jesus. Uh, I just want to talk about that because I think it's wild that uh, in fucking December of 2022, there is election fraud concerns in RuneScape, baby. Jeez, I hate this. Y'all got vote, issues. Vote yes. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Ooh, this game. game fucking crashes constantly, but it's also very good. Um, it's Wait. just good. You know, uh, it's funny because... I hear you saying that, and I've heard other people say that, but four of us played it on stream the other day for like an hour and a half. I, I haven't played it in about a week. Issue, um, I need to. Weird. I haven't played in about a week. I know they put out some hot fixes. I'm sure it's a little better than oh, okay. what it was. I've been like waiting to get super deep into it to see if anybody else wants to play it. Not not having too much luck with that. You want to play right after this? Um, uh, but anyway, what I have played in this game, very good. The Horde Shooter franchise was on its fucking knees, and I blame Evolve. Um, we talked about this the other day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just I blame Turtle Rock in general, but um, this one is so good. I didn't love Vermintide because I want to shoot stuff. Uh, I can shoot stuff in this one, and it's great. And the abilities are either uh, not obtrusive and don't matter, or they feel good. So that's great. Um, it's just it's just good. I like objectives, I like running around and shooting what are sensibly zombies. Uh. It's all. It's just everything you could want in in a horde shooter, and the story is actually cool. And hey, Warhammer is a cool setting. Who'd have fucking thunk it? Oh, the like gothic cathedral ships. Are oh, it's so, so fucking cool. cool. So awesome. And um, like also the 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 loot system. I thought I was gonna hate it. I actually like it. Yeah, I I, I didn't mind it. We we didn't play a ton. Uh, like we only got up to I think level four. We played for a little bit, but oh, okay. I, I was enjoying it. I, I, so far I haven't felt the mission variety is really there. Um, no, I, it's yeah. more it's it's more of the same kind of missions in different locations. Yeah, that's which is the only fine. Thing. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I was making an example like Deep Rock Galactic. 
you're always pretty much in the same locations. Like the the types of them will change, but yeah, the missions caves. are always very different. Um, and that's the kind of like if they did a but little I, bit more. I that, think I'd that's the thing that they'll add over time because this is of course because we live in 2022. Is a game is a service game. They're going to add to shit over time, which is fine. Um, because otherwise it just kind of becomes dead game after a month. Um. But like, cause like Vermintide got content for fucking years, so I'm not concerned that this will not get content. And Vermintide too, I really enjoyed. And and this, it's funny. This still feels like a melee game with some guns in it. And yeah. Oh like, yeah. The, the the melee system, I think, is actually is really good. Rewarding you by giving you the shield is like very yeah. Hard. And I I think the option to have guns just makes people feel a little bit better. Like I really yeah. like Vermintide too, but like if I had a gun in my back pocket in that game, I think. I would have enjoyed that game a little bit more. But the important um, thing is like in Left 4 Dead 2, it's like I, you run out of ammo relatively quickly. So like your gun is important, incredibly so, but you also need to know when to fucking use it, not just blah, 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 blah. Yeah, because we kept finding those like Nurgle beasts and I was like kept mm-hmm. running out of ammo and I was like, oh, I should save the ammo for those guys. Yeah. Um. So that made sense. I did really enjoy Dark Tide. <clears throat> what we played with it. I will play more of it. And lastly... During the, I don't know what it's called, oh, no. free flight time, I downloaded and played several hours of Star Citizen. Oh, no. And I, one of the two people on this video call right now that has played more of this game than I have is correct about Star Citizen. And that person is Ian Gibson. Star Citizen is bad. <laughs> it's Woo! one of those games where there are like... I. Having played it and having seen a bunch of TikTok content for it, there are little nuggets of like an incredibly cool game in there. Yeah, yeah. But it's just surrounded by so much shit and then like a terrible monetization subscription service type thing yes. on top of it that it's just like it's not worth it. I like tried to hide with I watched like a lot of content about the game trying to get myself. Yeah, I'm going to play. I'm going to fucking give it a fair shot. I'm going to like it. I like. Just the experience of. Hey, I have to walk to the thing to get in my ship. It's kind of unique and cool. And then like, yeah. oh, I have to call the base to like, you know, get permission to take off. Also kind of unique and cool. And then I'm like flying up to space and it takes a while. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is a bad decision to make me do this. I am not currently playing a video game. I li- like I should literally be looking at my phone right now. It is a better use of my time. Um, yeah. yeah. That's bad. That's just like I I understand wanting realism in a game, absolutely, and especially like you know in your in your fancy space sim. But also, this is a fucking video game. It should be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, but I, it's not even like like there are games that are not fun, right? Because they're like this is a fucking sim. You know, like I racing. Not fun. There are fun moments in it, but you're not playing it to have fun. You're playing it to be like, I'm driving a fucking car. But Star Citizen is like, it's not fun because it's trying to be super simmy, but then it's doing a sim of a bad, badly monetized, like shiny sci fi. And it's like, yeah, what are you what are you doing here? Also, like, how don't you tell me how space sim work? You haven't been to space. Nobody's been to space. Star Citizen feels like a vertical or it just feels like a game that isn't finished yet like you went to visit like a game studio and they're like yeah this is yes. what we're working on we've only been at it for a couple of months but it'll be great and you're like oh yeah this will be cool but it's been like 50 years and I, they have I, everyone's I, money <laughs> i played for i don't know about four hours i fl- i did like a tutorial mission i flew to a location ran out of gas on the way back which is a great system by the way um in a game where the the controlling of the actual spacecraft is a bit obtuse they make you they load you up with gas in the very first fucking uh car they give you space car um and then i tried for a solid two hours once i got back to like my uh spawn location to get a mission where i could go do the first person shooter bit and i it just i couldn't get it to go yeah and then i was like fuck this i give up this game is like the definition of scope creep because they just keep adding content and mechanics, et cetera, et cetera. But they can't actually finish or tie in or cohesify any of that shit. And it's yeah. it's been in development since 2010 and they've raised over five hundred million dollars from backers and they still don't have a cohesive video game to present. And it's wild. Five hundred million dollars. You could buy several countries with that. Yeah. 
Not the good ones. No, but like <laughs> fucking like you could like how many how many islands in the Pacific could fucking what Chris Roberts that's his name how many oh, could yeah. he just buy? I mean, they go for like a million or two each, so you could buy several hundred easily. I like. No, no, I don't. I don't want an island. I want. A, I want a country. Yeah. I think one of. The, I think Mark Hamill will probably die before that game comes out. And is he he's in, in that it. game. Yeah, oh, okay. and Gary he's in Oldman. The, he's in the. Why? Is he in the FPS? No, Push they're in the squadron just in the no- 42 yeah. thing. Yeah, that's but, right. Oh, that's but that, that's not even like close to being out from what I Exactly. Understand. Gary Oldman will be Gary Deadman by the time. <laughs> Gary Rebornman. <laughs> no, Gary he, Deadman. Let's Deadman go to, from, for for right. $500 million, you can buy the British Virgin Islands. I'm just Jeez saying. Louise. I'll make just the just making the British Islands. Am I right? Oh, fuck him. No, it, it is a good joke. I just don't have a good no, response, it honestly. Doesn't. It's not. Put your dick in the I... sand. <laughs> but how does that turn him British? No, they're already British, you idiot. They're the British Virgin Islands. He's going to take the Virgin out. We're done here. Move oh, on to the news. Okay. Oh, oh, we're oh, done. Sorry, um, I try to forget about colonialism. Uh, you guys let's ready? Go to the news. <laughs> I never okay. can. It's time for the news, everybody. <laughs> We gotta keep going. It's time for the news. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not everyone can be a banger. Was that live or did you pre record that? <laughs> that was pre recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. <laughs> you wanna hear it again? Yeah, let's hit it again. I, I opened the, the the webcam room to make sure you weren't fo- <laughs> fucking with me. I had to watch your mouth to see if it moved, and then it didn't, but I heard dulcet tones of Will Crosby, and it was very disconcerting, but also arousing. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Uh, it's time for the news, everybody. <clears throat> um, Sorry. We're here to talk about the news. The most important news this week, folks, I don't know if you saw it, but... The movie Ghosts. Death Stranding is becoming the movie Death Stranding. I I could this this I don't know when it actually happened, but I saw it about an hour and a half, two hours ago, and I couldn't believe it because this is how? one of those things that makes it makes so much sense. But I was like, how is this actually happening? Yeah. How, how, how is this happening before Metal Gear? First of all, that well, the answer, the answer no. is the answer is money. Yeah, but Metal Second Gear, Metal Gear, all, Metal Gear is being made right now. It's in like pre-production. It's been made, being made for like fifteen years. I know. But um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, it is in its current iteration. It is further than Death Stranding. Well, but yeah, we'll chances are low it'll come out. Um, the other thing is, they could just take all the mocap footage and just CGI this into a movie real quick, right? They could just put the cutscenes together. <laughs> yeah, they should put the cutscenes together. Um. I, I think this is interesting. It's from the uh, executive it's a long producer. Po- from... it's, just, it's just a long play of fucking Death Stranding that you watch on yeah. screen. <laughs> Barbarian. <laughs> that, I didn't watch that Barbarian movie. Did anyone watch it? Uh, it hold on, good. hold on, hold on. Scanning this I article. Good <laughs> oh, can't talk about this. Oh, yay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't fuck it. Uh, no, none of my views represent WME, IMG, or Endeavor as a corporate whole. Um, no, I haven't seen this fucking film, and I know nothing about it. <laughs> I've heard um, good things about it. Yeah, I also have heard good things about it. Um, so that's exciting. I, it's like it's weird. I think the the novelty of the story, not that they're making it, which is interesting, but it's just the full circle of Kojima finally have it like being able to make a movie, even though he, which I don't is know all how he involved fucking he will wants. be. It's just all he wanted. He'll be in, since he'll be he started EP. making games. Um, I believe he started making games because he wanted to make movies, but making games was easier to do, so he just made I games. I believe that's correct. Um, so, I mean, good for him. Oh, yeah. He's been hustling. He's got his, his thing. Uh, we didn't re- I wasn't here for the Death Stranding 2 stuff, but I watched that trailer. I, 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 assume, that. I assume you came. I I did. I had no idea what was happening until I got back. Um, mostly because the oh. game was happening at like four in the morning for me. Well, you, I, look, I'm gonna be honest with you, Will. You owe me a debt of gratitude because I know you didn't watch the stream, but... When that happened on stream, 
I debated for about 40 minutes and I discussed it Jake with Jake live on stream. I was considering calling your ass to wake you up and tell you that Death Stranding 2 was real. But it was like <laughs> 4 a.m. in the morning. Like I literally um, looked it up. Yeah. I um when I, in the trailer, had to call me twice. In the trailer, the big it. the big red mecha <laughs> walked on screen and I was like, oh, it's armored core. Um and then uh, I saw I saw the uh, decima logo and went, Oh, it's not armored core. Oh, but it's Kojima. And then I saw the uh the the bridges logo and went, Oh, <laughs> uh, I was, it was a, it was a, it was a roller coaster. <laughs> I was kind of surprised because this is a normal ass fucking trailer. Like he's yeah. just it's it's not in a bad way, but just in a like I'm not hiding a lot here. There's a lot of stuff for well, you to dig the, through. The it's jig is also kind of too. up. Like we with with the <laughs> four, first like four Death Stranding trailers, it was okay. But what is the actual gameplay, Mr. Kojima? Whereas like we have now played the video game. <laughs> But even like like MGSV, like that had a lot of cryptic. And even after yeah. even after it was revealed as Metal Gear Solid, it was still like you're like combing through little tiny details in these trailers. But this was just like, boom, Death Stranding 2. Here's a normal ass trailer with like a whole bunch of shit in it. You which is good to like, work on. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. There was like the weird priest people walking through the desert and stuff. So I yeah. feel like this is going to be obviously some time has passed. I'm I'm hoping and guessing the gameplay will not be... The gameplay will be similar, but you won't be like going around delivering packages, uniting America. No, I think I, th I, th I think he wants to mix up what each of these strand games is. So I think it's going to be like similar. So? I, mean, I think the controls will be very similar, but I think it'll be some new bullshit thing that you're doing, and it might yeah. still deal with like the the stumbling and the balancing of shit. But I I don't think it'll be just like delivering packages on a loop. I think that he's going to do something different because that's I think that's what he wants to do with each of these games. Is he wants to make his own unique bullshit thing, and I think he'll yeah. do a lot of like running back and forth. But I think it might be like over. I, I Honestly, I think it'll be more of like a, a grand loop kind of thing where it's like you eventually go all the way around a thing. Yeah. As opposed to like pinging back and forth a bunch. And and knowing like that that the director's cut DLC was him adding all the stealth and combat sections into it. So I, I feel like the tutorial of Death Stranding 2 is you delivering packages and the main bulk of the game is more like uh, MGS5 combat. I, so I, I hope that to be true, but I don't know if I believe it. Because at the end, isn't there a thing where it's just like, I need you to go on another journey or another trip or something? Yeah. Which makes but, it sound like this is more of the same. So Death Stranding 1 was the way it was because it was just he was trying to get it was budgetary concerns and also just getting it out there and wanting to, like, make something on his own. Like the reason you couldn't go into things that. or go into cities like that was just his his like new concept for a game that he wanted to get out. So, but the core gameplay, the core gameplay was still like there and it was solid and it was set up. So it the core gameplay wasn't a limitation because of budget. That was his choice. Right. I'm saying, but keeping that over and over again was like he wasn't changing it up as much because you weren't making a full fledged triple A featured video game. You know what I mean? Possibly. I just mean looking at that trailer and some of the lines they said. I don't expect it to be something completely different. I expect it to still be 50% the same game. Yeah, at least. I, I, I just don't see the delivering stuff again. That's the only thing. That's my guess. No more delivery. Yeah, I can see that. No more delivering, but still the journey, still the walk. Yeah, oh, totally. Oh, but oh I think no, no, no. You're, you're walking around and you're biking around yeah. a lot. 100%. I don't, I just don't think it's packaged. I think you'll be doing other shit. I think probably yeah. with more shooty shooty shot shot because even even someone as stubborn as Kojima knows that people want to shoot things in his video games and got a lot of reception and reviews of no I want to play the fucking Metal Gear gameplay loop that you're famous for motherfucker yeah yeah I don't know we'll see <clears throat> he hates guns which is wild considering everything about him and his like claim to fame but he hates putting guns in his video games no more guns um ian gibson tell me about Ooh. your thing yeah so um steam did uh, a really cool interview with the verge about the steam deck uh they had some cool tidbits in here so steam deck if you're not familiar with it let's do the quick rundown steam deck is basically the portable steam device um it's been out i believe for nine months now 
Uh, it's had more than 90 wow. software updates. It's sold more than a million uh, hardware copies. It's winning a lot of like hardware console of the year awards. Far and away a runaway success. Um, they had some key things in here, like, uh, you know, they're talking about probably not doing a Steam Deck Pro, but it is a multi-generational device, so they're already thinking about what the next Steam Deck looks like. Uh, they've been fixing some issues with the battery and the fan. Uh, they're talking about their Steam Deck 2 ideas, and they said the key thing is number one is better battery life. Number two is a better screen, better or bigger. And they also talked about how um, they're not going to go back to the Steam Box. The Steam Box was their original, like, Concept. not the Steam... Yeah, not the Steam Link, but the Steam Box, where basically you have a PC console, home theater PC type thing. Um, Which they talked about for fucking, like, I feel like it was talked about for a decade, if not more. I mean, it's Steam OS. Like, they built yeah. their own Linux variant for it. Um, but regardless, it's it's a runaway success. So, so, you know, just going off the back of this story, Steam Deck 2 is coming. I know at least Will has one. Chris, you don't have one? No, I. so here's the thing. Up until this article, I was debating buying one for myself uh, when I get my, my bonus, which is early on in the year. Um, and now I'm like, well, fuck, <laughs> if you're going to make it two, like, what? A, a, yeah. But nah. <laughs> yeah, they haven't said win, though, so they could That's, just be. And and hey, your question here, what do we want to see with two? I want and I want this from every company that makes hardware. Tell me when the fuck it's actually coming, because yeah. if you say, hey, it's coming in two years. OK, I will buy this one and I'll probably buy the next one, too, because I'm that like I'm your target demographic, which is ending yeah. with the switch. Everyone was waiting with beta for a fucking switch pro. So I was like, oh, OK, I'm not going to get another switch because Vic and I both like use the idea yada, 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 for the pro. And guess what? I They have not gotten my money for like three years now because I'm still waiting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tell me so, when, motherfucker. Yeah, and and I would love to see an extended battery life. I've heard bad things about that battery life, especially if you're playing. Yeah, I've heard like si like game. like like six hours is your absolute top playing like a very simple game that doesn't require a lot of battery. Yeah. Which like, I, like that's like that, six, is, is that the worst hours, thing ever? No, six hours is great. That's double what you're getting with the Switch for most games. Yeah, yeah. yeah unless you have the. But uh, I think I think my yeah. problem is the other end. People were saying if you're playing an intensive game, you're like ninety. That's minutes what I was tops. gonna say. Yeah, you're looking at like an hour, maybe two, and like that's yeah. that's not good for a portable console. And like, yeah. yeah, I I know most like as adults, like when do we have two hours to play a game without like having access to a, a charger flight. at some point in there? You have a charger on a flight. Um, but also like, yeah, but what if I want to hand this to my miserable child to shut him up? <laughs> Jesus. I, I I've been enjoying the Steam Deck. I have not. I've yet. I, Dwarf Fortress is the closest I've gotten to the game that has made me play it a lot. I still have in the back of my head being like, uh, oh, maybe I'll. I should get rid of it. Like, do I really use it that much? The only thing that's having me keep it is the fact that it is. It is currently the like best retro gaming thing handheld. Um. I was watching through, I forget his name on YouTube, does a bunch of retro handheld stuff. Uh, he was going through, like, his picks for the year, which were, like, the Mio for, like, low-range stuff and all the stuff. And his number one pick was the Steam Deck because it just does everything. Um, retro Dodo? Is that what he is? Um, but it was also in that video that made me realize, like him, he admits this in the video, that I just like collecting handhelds. Uh, because, they're yeah. so, like, all the stuff he showed, I was like... I would buy every single one of those right now because they're so cool. Um, but yeah, yeah I, the Steam Deck I, I've been really enjoying, but I think once I add some more retro stuff to it, I'll, it'll be more of like the main con handheld I play rather than just the Game Boy. Also, just emulate on Pocket. it. Yeah, exactly. I would, oh, y'all, the amount of RuneScape I can play in this fucking... Oh, fuck off. I did install so RuneScape think... on it, but I haven't played it yet. I think the other thing, though, is, Attaboy. you know, talking to, to Jake and I, we were watching the Game Awards together and he was talking about how, you know, he still doesn't have a gaming PC. So he's on a Mac and he's got an Xbox and he's got a PlayStation 4. And I was like, oh, well, you can probably do one cheap now. You can probably find something. But then I realized, like, fucking Steam Deck is like 450. Like, if you don't have a gaming PC, just buy a fucking Steam Deck. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Homeboy, like, Homeboy only has a Mac. Yeah, because he's an idiot. Jesus fuck! <laughs> uh, like I use a one at work and it's just fine, but like functioning on a day to day without a PC sounds like absolute fucking hell yeah. for someone that actually uses a computer and isn't like you know a mom. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so, yeah, so, out there. Was... <laughs> so I think that's I think that's one of the things about the Steam Deck that makes it great is you can spend five hundred dollars on a super low budget gaming PC and then have to put some peripherals on top of it like monitor etc. Yeah. Or just buy a fucking Steam Deck, man. Yeah. Like that's that's the new entry point for PC gaming in my mind. And it'll shut your kids up. Yeah. So anyways, that's Shut the update on the, on the Steam Deck. I, I do. I do. To your point, Chris, this in this article, they are talking about like specific things that they have fixed. Like they said, hey, the fan was noisy for some of them. So we actually are like bundling them in electrical tape and it makes them quieter. And we tweak the profile like I didn't see a, that. That's hilarious. It's like, like a major console release. And there is so much like information, both frequency and like quantity and quality of information coming out of them that it feels fantastic. Like one of the things they said was like, we don't expect the Steam Deck software to ever be stable. Like this is the stable branch. They're like, no, we're always going to be pushing it. So we're always going to be pushing updates. It may occasionally break things, but we always want to make it better through software as well as hardware. And that means things are we may have bad updates. That's just how it's going to be. And it's can you like, can you roll cool. back updates like Adobe? Probably. I, I hey, if I if I deal with After Effects updating, I can fucking deal with this shit. Yeah, man. Or Divinci the Resolve. terrible Premiere twenty twenty three. No, what? Yeah, it's time. It is terrible. Um, it is. I, I will say. It is, it, sorry, <laughs> you don't know what the fuck yes. I do for a living. You think it's fucking time for me to switch to fucking DaVinci Resolve? Yeah. I I made the change like two three years ago, and I haven't looked back because fuck Adobe. It was real bad with Premiere. And and uh, After Effects and just going to DaVinci Resolve and it's just like oh, you cannot sorry. replace what Will and I do in After Effects with DaVinci. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can. You got you got Fusion. I will Fusion's punch fantastic. You. I will punch you square in the dick. <laughs> you totally you can. One. There's zero reason you can't. Yes, there. Okay, we're not, we're not doing this. <laughs> we're this not doing this. This is content for no one. Uh, I I will say um, the only problem with my Steam Deck so far is the fan will like go off and be like. Whoo! Uh, and yeah. be super loud, but I think uh, yeah, my boss has said the same thing about his. Um, gross. Uh, Chris, tell me all about the bullshit at the Game Awards. Oh my God, the Game Awards happened, and it was of course a hot mess. It always kind of is. This year it was particularly a hot mess because of uh, Al reform Al Pacino, reformed rabbis, Christopher Judge deciding fuck y'all. I'm just gonna ramble. Um, in a mm. And like, look, the speech was also just bad. Um, I okay. Here's what I really want to talk about the Game Awards, which is I think the Game Awards is such a shitty award show for a lot of reasons, but mostly because they 100 percent treat the awards reward, awards like second fiddle, which yeah. kind of they fleet. kind of, <laughs> that kind of fucking kicks ass. Um. They, uh, which they kind of have to because obviously you sell this ad time, right? So, like, that's a certain amount of time you have to, you, like, you know, fucking Star Wars paid for their three minutes. They get their full three minutes no matter how long Christopher Judge talked for because they paid money for three minutes. But that is the inherent problem with the Game Awards of this is really an advertising showcase and not an awards show. So the awards feel like second fiddle. And also, I think there is fundamentally something wrong with their voting system. Because every year, just the biggest games win everything. Um, and, like, it's not always so apparent. This year it was very apparent because God of War and uh, fucking, what do you call it? Stray. Uh, Elden, Elden, I mean, Stray won, like, two things. Uh, God of Wait, War. Stray won something? Stray won things. Yeah. Stray um, was nominated and won way too many things. Whereas, ne whereas Neon White and Immortality both well, lost everything, which is absurd. Neon White. But okay, uh, you're wrong. Um, which is fine. You like Stray more than Neon White. Immortality. Okay. Immortality lost best performance, which is fucking what? bullshit. Because Christopher Judge, who is a very talented voice actor, very talented performer, um, and did a great job. Sure, he played a character he's already played in a similar fashion. Whereas it's Man Engage, his best character, whereas Man Engage played four fucking people in three movies and one meta narrative thing, and fucking gets I don't know a, a nice round of applause for her work. Um, but also. It's, the I didn't industry. believe God of War was happening. I believed those were movies from like the 60s and 70s. And I'll, like, hey, don't, wholeheartedly. Worry, don't worry. 
It also lost Best Direction, Will. In what? Fact, in fact, it didn't win a single fucking award, including Best Indie or Narrative. How? Got a war one Best Narrative, to which my point remains of, okay, yes, Fine. Maybe it was high quality. Maybe it was very good. What did it do differently than God of War 1, which is fuck fight, fuck face dad Kratos and boy. I, oh. That's not what I want to get mad about. I want to get mad about a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have a fundamental problem with the Keelys is that I don't think they actually provide anything as an awards show. Uh, like I, the, the whole thing was that we're not going to do the Spike TV Game Awards again, and they cut out the dick jokes. But it's still just kind of like companies pay money to show up here and show off their new games. Which is why don't you just do fucking uh what is, what is Summer Games Fest, but in the fall then? Because that's games the same fest. bitch. Done. And in, instead of like pissing me off and acting like this industry is capable of having an objective opinion, which like the Academy isn't capable of doing that. So I don't know why we thought fucking gamers were going to crack the code on that one, but they at least, they at least present it as objective, you know, <laughs> game awards doesn't even do that. It's just like, I think we're going to throw these awards off. No, they don't. And if I you think have, that if, if you've got yeah. fucking commercials and if you're not even yeah, like fair. presenting the awards properly and you're presenting them in the pre-show, then fuck off. Well, mo mo objective. more awards were announced off stage uh, by Jeff Keighley oh. in a quick, quick runoff than were announced on stage. Um, yeah, exactly. They did have to cut three because of speeches running over. Cough, cough, Mr. Judge. Jesus. Um, uh, also, Triangle Strategy didn't make it into the best strategy games thing. Here's which is which is my, my point of. This is why I think your your voting system must be flawed because that is the most well received received strategy game of this year by a lot, a ton. And if it's not making it into your top list, I understand that it's a voting system by a group of peers, but then your your selection is bad. Something has gone wrong about with their system. And I think it shows on like smaller awards like the games for change stuff where they make actually like rational decisions because they have different juries. Yeah, that are yeah. only people for like change or the accessibility awards stuff like that um yeah i don't know it's fucking rough buddy is what i'm telling you my cat's so, shit, so, it terrible. Yeah. So, so jeff gersman was was talking about this and his theory is that because it's it's like the e3 uh the e3 awards etc where basically they go to each outlet and they say hey we're gonna poll you we have a selection of trusted outlets and you're gonna provide your nominees etc and in each of those outlets you know, sometimes they will typically poll their employees and it essentially it comes down to popularity, not because the game is necessarily popular, but because it's popular enough that people have played it. So yeah. if, if if 30 people have played God of War and five of them absolutely loved it, those five people are going to be very vocal. Whereas if three people played Case of the Golden Idol and absolutely loved it, that's three versus five. So it's 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 a problem of the games are not getting enough representation inside the people doing the nominations and putting in the votes. And therefore, the popular games are always going to have more support just because they're being played more. It, it's it's a it's a popularity contest and a zeitgeist con contest, which is like that may be the case for what is it's so like the first Oscars didn't have a best picture. They had a best popular movie category. This game, the Game Awards almost needs that. It almost needs a, be a game of the year and best popular game award oh, but that's a good point though like but the, but the academy is also it's academy voters and there are it's it's not just hey we're gonna go to the la times and we're gonna invite the la times film critics and the new york times film critics to select this it's like yeah but you no, know what the, we're gonna go we're gonna go to directors we're gonna go to actors that have passed a certain criteria to be members of the society and to vote as part of the academy why aren't they fucking doing that with the game awards why doesn't kojima be part of mm -hmm. this vote you know, also, I don't know if the Academy vote works the same way as the Game Awards vote in the Academy. So everyone puts their their, their primaries in right there. It's, I think you yeah. put I, I think it's 15 movies now. Someone could correct me on that. Um, but once then, if you are in the second round of voting, which not everybody is, you are expected to and told to watch everything that is nominated and yeah. submit like a thing. And if you haven't watched it, note that you haven't watched it. And like, I think they put your ballot in a lower seat or something like that. It's a very complicated system. Um, and I guarantee I actually I can almost yeah, I can guarantee you for certain that no not every single person that is voting played every single game in all those categories. No fucking chance. Yeah, no way. Guarantee it. Yeah. Guarantee it. So they, uh, that's an implicit flaw. My they probably, um, they probably don't even do two rounds of votes, by the way. Probably just do one. 
my just, one hope for the game awards, and I need both because I didn't watch this, so I need you both to answer me. Mm-hmm. This is my one, my one saving grace was. <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting emotional. Was there a sighting of Whooper? No, no. there was no Whooper watch. God there was a Muppet. There was a little boy on stage. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I mean, like you, little boys. You, you, Jesus Christ, you work at a fucking games news outlet. I'm assuming you know about the boy. I heard about the boy. Oh, and I'm man, mad about the boy. That, the boy thing went from, oh, ha ha, someone crashed the award show to, oh, that dude's been arrested. Oh, that dude's an Infowars, like, like Holocaust yeah. denier so fast. No, he's just in Jeff Keighley's basement hooked up to a car battery. (laughs) No, he's dead. Like, (laughs) it was just just so weird because Jake and I were watching it and pretty quickly we realized, like, is that somebody's son back there? Like he's he's not. He didn't rush the stage. He was just there the entire just, time during I the just Elden thought, Ring. All right, maybe he's a young dude who's like somehow involved. I don't know. He just happened. He works at Man. FromSoft. He happened to be in town. Who cares? But then you know the thing happened. And and like I love that. By the way, he's getting pulled off by security as he's like finishing his sentence. It's the timing yeah. on it is incredible. I I did not watch the clip. I took one look it's at the headline and thought. I don't need the secondhand anxiety. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> funny, but like it's, it's also stupid. like six seconds, so like I don't know. Um, <laughs> as far as like thing. that's for the only thing that matters about the game awards announcements. Um, there was some stuff like Hades two. Obviously, I'm excited. Armored Core six. Your boy got horny for that one. Um, anything that like sh- particularly y'all were Can like, we, let's fucking go. You know, you let's just let's wait, pause I, here. I, just shut the fuck up. Let's talk about no, Armored Core no. six for a little bit. <laughs> Because there's a very funny discourse that's happening, which is all these people being like, I'm worried Armored Core 6 is going to be a Soulsborne game. And then people being like, it's okay, guys, it's not going to be a Soulsborne game. It's just like weird controversy. And it's like, no, they are capable of making different games. They've been doing it forever. Yeah, but 95% of people that play FromSoft games have never played an Armored Core game. Yeah. And most of them don't even know that Miyazaki directed the last fucking five no sorry four of them um and like look he wants nothing more than to fucking make his big big mecha game he doesn't give a shit about making it a souls like he just wants yeah. to make his big robots punch and he wants you to be able to take porno photos of them with your fucking filters zooming yeah. in on the individual gears because that's Fuck what gets yeah. miyazaki's rocks off hell yeah uh chris i want to say you so i i played a little bit of hades like two to five hours of it mm. um you would rather have a hades 2 or a new super giant game I'd, I'd rather have a new super giant game but i am fine with them doing a sequel um they've never done it before it's their yeah. fifth game um i i like like why well, yeah I prefer a new game because I, I think every single game they make is like either great or at least worth playing um mm-hmm. So, like, I would prefer a new world because, honestly, I think they do such a good job of inventing and, like, making new shit, even if it's, like, a similar gameplay loop. Um, but I'm totally fine. I, I totally understand them doing a Hades 2. And, honestly, I am I kind of want to see what they do with a sequel. That's a, that's a cool concept yeah, for them. that's true. D- Darren Korb, the music director for Supergiant, he also is, like, a recording artist and, like, uh, helps produce, like, movie scores and shit. He uh, famously doesn't like doing things more than once. He said he's never, he's never made two albums that are the same. Um, so this would be the first time he's ever stylistically done two albums that are the same. And I kind of, I'm like, all right, cool. What's he going to do to like, to like mix it up? <laughs> oh, he quit. <laughs> yeah. He killed himself <laughs> last night. <laughs> okay. Like, like, like super giant sells itself on a few things, horny character design, decent writing, gorgeous, like visuals. And like the music losing the music is a huge loss for super giant games. <laughs> I'm just no, worried because in my completely yeah, subjective sure. opinion, uh, super giant is like great game. Uh, great game, and uh, you know there was like there was Bastion, and then there was like Pyre, and you know Transistor. Uh, so it's like it's like up and down. So I'm I'm worried if they're gonna. I I kind of didn't want them to do something new because that would be their bust in in the cycle I have in my own head. But at the same time, not that they're not doing something new. I'm like worried maybe Hades is the bust. Hades too. So I'm like. It's weird. They, they don't fire on all cylinders for every game. So that's uh, the only thing that gives me a I little bit agree, of anxiety about this. Me. I, I think Pyre is a flawed game. But other than that, I think Bastion Transistor and like Bastion uh, for the time. Not like, terrible, but ba- God, I hate you so much. 
Bastion for the time, like it was, it was their first game made with I think like four people or whatever. Well, Bastion's great, incredible. Transistors, of course, my favorite game of all time. Uh, Pyre, mm-hmm. eh. and then Hades. I think like like they had no idea how good that game was going to be. I think. Yeah, but that, I just mean it's not like they're knocking out bangers every time. That's literally the only thing that gives me the slightest bit of hesitation with Hades too. Is I'm like they they have I done mistakes think- before, so. I mean, I do think it'll be more of the same. I think honestly, but I think that's kind of what people want is like they kind of want to be able to people are talking about I want to play a game again for the first time, I want to play whatever game for the first time. This is going to be kind of that. It's like you get to basically yeah. experience a fresh haze with what I assume is new weapons, which is your combat loop and new God enchantments, which is your new like modifiers. So like for a rogue, like that's literally that's it. Like that's what you get in a sequel. Yeah. True. And new like, locations. It, and of course, yeah, new locations and new, new monsters. But like 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 all that is effectively it could be a DLC and instead it's just like, you know, it's a full ass game, which for them, I'm like, great. Also the horny artwork. God, God bless you. Yeah, we love it. Um, great. Is that everything from the game awards? Um, anything else y'all? I mean, Diablo four trailer looked good, but it was just a cinematic trailer horizon. Yeah. Same thing. Um, anything else that go- they, Got y'all. I, oh, we we got we we saw some more uh, Mario movie, which I mean it looks gorgeous, but I don't. And you know I need to fucking see the movie to have an opinion on it. I um, I think this is the year. I say it every year, but I was struggling to watch this fucking thing like five minutes into it. So I think I'm genuinely oh, the pacing's done terrible. with the Game Awards. No, I mean, I mean, in terms of the Game Awards has been the same fucking intolerable shit for years now. Yeah. But I feel like this is the year where I was literally done. A few minutes in and I was just like, you know what? I don't want to go through this shit anymore. <laughs> we were watching yeah. it at one point and I genuinely hit the the forward arrow on my keyboard a few times trying to skip. And I was like, oh, it's live. I can't do that. <laughs> it was shorter this year. Like, fuck, it was. It was oh. still, what, three, three and a half hours. It was three hours, which is the shortest it's ever been. But like, man, it was a it was a long three hours. And like, like so much nothing happens. Cut, like, cut the half the fucking trailers. Like, half the fucking it, trailers don't deserve to be there. Yeah, but money. I also like. I don't mind that I missed the whole thing because the like big news, like Death Stranding two, the news I care about, has made its way to me. And then the other stuff that was announced or shown trailers for, I get to be pleasantly surprised when either it has a second trailer or yeah. it comes out. Like I don't care. I mean, I think the only positive thing of watching it live was that Al Pacino moment was just. I'm glad I experienced that live. That and the Christopher Judge speech was those were two unique, interesting no, moments the to Judge experience. Speech live. was funny for the first like three minutes, like once you noticed it was it, long. Then but it then became it, absurd. Dude went for fucking like, ten minutes or some shit. Like you get and then you, they, and then you're they lucky finally to get, started playing him out. And then he kept talking. You're lucky yeah. to get two minutes of the fucking Academy Awards. So Chris, Chris Judge is like, nah, nah. Should I give it to Man Academy Awards? A red dot appears on your forehead. But that's the thing is, that's one of those things where, like, you can watch the Death Stranding 2 trailer for the first time the next day and get those chills, but you can't watch the Christopher Judge thing the next day and be like, oh, I kind of know what's going to happen. It doesn't have the same impact. So it's one of those, like, live moments. I mean, that's that's just experiencing anything live is you you get to be in the the moment with the bullshit. I've never experienced anything live before, which uh, I saw this. There's this uh, trivia app you should check out. Oh yeah, oh, fuck me. I was uploading all that. I built my NAS out, and I was transferring files over. And one file was just RTF. And I was transferring. Deleted it, it. I was like, oh fuck, all this shit. Um, are we gonna go through the news, or are we gonna no. skip to the spotlight? Anything good? Let's go to the spotlight. No. FTC thing Ian, is funny. Moving on. Ian, tell me all about your indie game of the week. We got a new segment. Look, folks, we talk about a lot of games. <gasps> we talk a lot about mainstream games. We talk about a lot of indie games, too. But we've been hearing rumblings from the indie devs, from everybody, that apparently <gasps> the wish list in Steam matters, that that drives a lot of the algorithm of getting your game in front of gamers and getting your game good sales when it eventually comes out, getting yourself publicity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're starting a new, a new little segment called the wishlist spotlight that's not the final name where every week <laughs> one of us Great. gets to pick every you, only, week, you only had a hundred episodes to come up with a name every week one of us picks a game that hasn't been released yet it's a little tiny indie darling and we say hey this game looks fucking cool and you should check it out and wishlist it this week that game is thunder helix 
on Steam. This is from David Walters. This game doesn't have a release date yet, but you can wishlist it. This game looks incredible. It's like a combination between like the original Microsoft Flight this Simulator. Is some Ian Gibson fucking bullshit. Didn't don't I send this shit, to you? Don't shit on the wishlist game. No, it actually looks good, but it is some Ian Gibson bullshit. Let me describe the fucking game. So this this <laughs> is like this is like 90s Microsoft Flight Simulator combined with some of those like Jane's Combat airplane games. You're Thunder Helix. You're a badass helicopter. You kind of look like a Comanche slash Apache style helicopter. Crazy, like super pixelated, like Comanche, uh, mm. uh, like Commodore 64 almost graphics. And you're running around and you're like, flying uh, around. Like, you're shooting that, shit. Uh, that Brigador game. You guys play that? Yeah. 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 This it it's this just looks like one of those really cool little indie arcade flight games with an incredible aesthetic. So definitely check out Thunder Helix. Give it a wish list. It the, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just reading it now. One of the features. Is crisp 320 by 200 resolution with 16 <laughs> or 256 color graphics. This game's going to be so fun. That's awesome. Um, this this guy is also the devs a good follow on Twitter because he like does dev yeah. stuff and updates and everything. Oh, that's that's cool. why I found him. Check yeah. It out. So is um, it, is it, does only one person do that, or do we all have to give a thing off our wish list? No, just, no, it's just one. Oh, okay. Don't you dare! Uh, no, you don't get to make fun reference. of the segment and then put it and put a fucking yeah, you wish piece list. of shit. Uh, <laughs> anyways, why, why, why do you have me on? Then that's all I ever do. <laughs> uh, wish list is trash. No, uh, Thunder Helix is great. I'm a good uh, boy. Future reference, Ian, if you could hyperlink uh, in the uh, thing so I can add. Uh, future reference, if you could. Fuck off. <laughs> Make my life a little bit easier. Mm, put uh, it in there. I need it in the document. Yeah. But it's too late for the document. Well, and, well, I need when I fill yeah, out the <laughs> YouTube description, I put it oh, there. That's fair. We, we burn the documents after every episode of local we chat. We sh I actually shred my computer monitor that I'll, it appeared on. <laughs> I'll do it. I put it right through the shredder. The data's um, there. You gotta get rid of it. Folks, I don't know how long the outro song is, so uh Ooh, that's play, fun. and we'll see how it how it goes. Uh folks, thank you so much for joining us this week. This has been another episode of Local Chat, episode 100. I hope you enjoyed it. Joining me this week, Ian Gibson and the lovely Chris Elliott from Save Data. You can find them at Save Data Chris on Twitter. You can find Ian at Think Gibson on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find subpixelfilms.com. Bring you straight to our link tree where you can check out all of our stuff. This Saturday, we'll be back and we'll see you then. <laughs> the ending was so fucking sudden. Bye. <laughs>